Now, before the video starts, I just want to talk about a couple of things. The first being, in the video, I mentioned that I'm going to be in Taiwan and Hong Kong. And if you want to catch up with me, leave me a comment down below. I'm not in Taiwan or Hong Kong. I'm back home in Auckland. I did try to upload the video when I got to Taiwan, but the internet and the hotel wasn't that good. So I gave up on that idea. And the second thing is, I picked up my SL3 in Hong Kong. I absolutely love this camera. This is a big upgrade from the SL2S. Now, I will have a video in a couple of days on my initial thoughts of this camera. I've only had it for a short period of time. This is my camera. Obviously, it's not a loan camera or a review camera. So if you're interested in that video, hit the subscribe button down below. And I think you have to hit the bell icon to get a notification. So if you do that, you'll get a notification when this video will be out in a couple of days. Now back to the video, which you've clicked on, which is what's in my bag, the Billingham Hadley Pro. So this is going to be a quick what's in my bag video. I leave tomorrow for Taiwan. So by the time you see this video, I'll be in Taiwan or Hong Kong. Depends on how quick I can get it edited. I'm going to try and edit it on the plane and get it out within a couple of days of me actually arriving in Taiwan. Now this is the Billingham Hadley Pro. Not the Hadley Pro 2020, which has removable shoulder straps. I'm going to put it there. Like this on here. This is my Hadley one. You can actually remove the shoulder straps. This one you can't. They're stitched in. Now this is a special edition and this is brand new. I've just received it. As you can see, it's still got the labels on it. Like I said, this is a special edition bag. You can only buy this from Red Dot Camera in the UK. They do ship worldwide. You can't buy this from Billingham's website or any other distributor around the world. It's actually got here, if I can show you. It's on there, hang on, it's somewhere there. There it is, there. Yeah, there. Really hard for me to see, but I'm looking at another camera, it's there. So that's Red Dot Camera. You can go over to the website, there'll be a link to the website down below. I purchased this bag, it's my bag. I also purchased another bag because I was looking for the website, but I'll talk about that later on. So this is the Hadley Pro. This is made in the UK, and I love building the bags. I've got quite a few building the bags. I just think they're the best bags you can buy, to be truthful. I'll quickly show you around the outside of the bag. Like I said, shoulder straps are not removable. You have to buy the shoulder pad. It doesn't come with a bag, so you have to buy this. This is an extra. On the rear of the bag, you've got a zip pocket, which is here and you can put your passport, documents, everything else in there. This is made from a wax canvas, I think. Whatever it is, it's water repellent. It keeps the rain out and these flaps hang over the side and it stops the rain getting inside to the bag and damaging your gear. All the parts you see here are leather and you can see the green camouflage underneath. And that's the special edition about this bag. Like I said, it makes it a bit unique. I like this because it reminds me of the old British camouflage that the army used to wear. It's um, quite cool. Yeah, quite nice. Right, so to open the bag, you unpop these. Now this is gonna be my daily carry bag. So most of the gear in here will be with me, but it's also gonna be going on the plane with me. So there's gonna be a little bit extra in here because I need to check it in basically. The top opens like that, and it's got this material on the bottom as well, which helps keep it water repellent. Now, there is no compartment in this bag for an iPad or a laptop. I do keep mine, I'll show it there, look. I do keep mine at the back here. It fits in there fine, but there is no padding for it. So you have to be aware of that. I won't be carrying the iPad all the time, but it's handy to have. The other reason why I have the iPad before I put it down is it's USB-C. And because it's USB-C, it means I can transfer to the iPad faster to edit photos but I can also charge the camera. So I can charge my SL2S, the M11P, and the Q3 can all be charged via the battery on the iPad, which is really handy. At the back, there's nothing there really. It's just your serial number of what your bag is. You got your camera gear in there. Now, one thing I did think Bill and missed with this bag is they didn't put an AirTag pocket. There's nowhere to put an AirTag on there. So I put mine, you see here, like under that popper, I've got my air tag. So it basically goes in there and then I just pop that together and it's got the air tag on my bag. I'll show you what's inside the bag first and then we'll talk about the front pockets. Again, this is gonna be a quick video because I am still packing. I have a lot more gear to pack, but I thought I'd do a quick video and show you guys what's inside the bag. So this is my M11P. This has the new 50 mil Sumalux, which is the close focusing version, which goes down to 0 0.45 meters or 45 centimeters. I have actually done a first impressions on this lens on my channel. This would have been uploaded a couple of days before this video is gonna be uploaded. 
So that's my MLMP. Before I forget, I have a B plus W filter on the front. I don't keep the front caps on any of my lenses with my Leica cameras. Basically because I can miss a shot and I don't need to worry because the filter will protect the front element. And I've never seen any difference in resolution or sharpness with these filters. These are really good quality filters. But I always keep them on and I don't keep the lens front cap on. Because if you know if you have a shot of a rangefinder you put up to your eye, you don't actually look through the lens. You look through the rangefinder patch. So I always keep these filters on. It protects the front of the lens and I don't have to worry about the lens cap. The other camera I have is my MP. This is a film camera. This actually has the cap on. Again, this has a B plus W filter on the front, so I don't need to worry about damage in the front element. This is an outstanding camera. I love this camera, especially with the 28mm on there. But I will be doing a review with this lens on this camera to see how this performs on a film camera. But that's my MP. People ask me about these little things. My cameras, these are the Peak Design dongles. I think in here I have somewhere, there it is. So I use the wrist strap. So that goes, there's one in there actually, it's a spare one. Let me take that out, there you go. So that goes in there and it locks in and that's my wrist strap and I can swap the wrist strap between two cameras. I don't like neck straps personally. I'm not a big fan of neck straps. So I prefer to have a wrist strap. The camera's always in my hand that way. So I put them out of the way over there. Put that back in there for a minute. Okay, and then on this side, I have something. I'm gonna move this out of the way a minute because I'm gonna show you this. I've just bought this. This is not what it is. It's inside a pouch now. This is a Canon um, lens adapter this goes from ef to rf body cameras but i put it in there i've got this which is the insta360 ace pro i think they call it which is an 8k action camera which has a flip up screen which is quite nice now the reason why i bought this is i'm going to attempt to do a pov video or a couple of pov videos in taiwan and hong kong so the camera is going to be strapped to my body and i'm going to walk around and take photos i've never done it before so keep an eye out on my channel because they may pop up if it goes well if it doesn't go well you may not see them at all but i'm going to try and do some pov videos now how i'm going to attach this to my body which is this ridiculous thing i bought is this which kind of looks like a really cruel dog collar but what it does unlock it there like that and it goes around your neck like that a bit fiddly but there you go like that and the camera sits here so you can actually get a view of what i'm doing now my problem is i don't actually use live view when I'm shooting my cameras on the rangefinders anyway, on my MP and my M11P, I use a rangefinder patch. So I've got to get used to using the M11P with a rear screen, which would be quite interesting. But I can also use this for my Q3 as well. So that's in the bag, I'll put that back in there. Seen some really good videos on this. I gave up a GoPro. I, I love GoPros, but they just keep dying on me. So that's why I bought this. Um, I have an Insta 360 one inch 360 camera as well. And that's been incredibly good. So gonna see how well this does. So that goes back in this little pouch to keep it protected. I put that in there. Right, so in the front here, I have that pouch. I have the wrist strap that you saw. A link to all of these items will be down below in the description so you can check them out yourself. And I have this, which this is new actually. Well, partly new. There, so I'll move that out of the way again. So this is my Shure 846 in here headphones. I've had these for quite a few years now. This is the new Bluetooth charging case. These parts are new, these are old, and this is the charging case. So it will keep recharging this system. These are the best audio you're gonna get out of any in-ear headphones, basically. The sound quality is unbelievable, and I absolutely love these. The only problem is that's quite a big case. Compared to my AirPod Pros, which are somewhere around here, this is a lot bigger, but I have to say, I do prefer the audio quality from these headphones. So in here, I've got this nice little pouch and that's the brand there again a link to all of the products will be down below i've got a pencil i've got a, a sharpie or magic marker i have that to write on my film if i want the film to be treated different at the lab that's what i use this for i use the pencil for taking notes really i'm old school i do like to write things down um, and just jot things down and doodle sometimes so that's why i have that i've got a cleaning cloth but this is also a very good cloth for wiping off moisture off your camera and rain because obviously you don't want to put your cameras back in the bag wet. So I've got that in there. This is a USB-C cable. I can charge my M11P, my Q3, and my SL2S with this cable from my iPad Pro. It comes in really handy. I actually have my AirPod Pros in there. Look, the difference in case is huge. But the audio quality is better on these shores. At the top, here I've got spare batteries for my MP. 
I've got a spare battery for the M11P. I don't think I'm gonna be using this. I don't run out of battery on the M11P. The camera is absolutely amazing now, and these new batteries last a very long time. And then I've got this here, which is a variable ND from B plus W, which is the same as the clear filters on my cameras. The reason I have this is because my MP, it only goes up to a thousand of shutter. That's it, that's the maximum shutter on this. So if I wanna shoot this lens a bit more wide open than I normally would, I can use this variable ND and it will do the job. And it's a really nice variable ND. This pouch is definitely worth the money. I think it's about 30 US dollars, but you can organize so much stuff in here and it keeps everything in one place. So I know where everything is as well. And like I said, I'm always carrying spare batteries and I have the cable and I have my AirPod Pros in there, which probably won't be in there to be truthful. So these pockets here, I'll show you these. You can actually make these pockets smaller. There. You can make them bigger as well, which is a nice feature. And the material is really nice. It's, it's got a nice texture to it. And then that goes down on there to stop any rain getting in. On this side, I have my notepad. I always carry a notepad. Like I said, I like to jot things down and doodle sometimes. So it's quite handy to have. I'm old school, I can do it with my iPad. There's no problem to do it with my iPad, but I do like to write things down on the notepad. And then in here I've got my bags of film. Now they're not normally like this. The reason they're like this, the reason they're like this is because they're gonna go hand checking. There's color and black and white. I can buy more film in Taiwan if I need it. It's readily available and it's quite reasonably priced, but this is what I'm gonna take with me. Now the reason they're in these Ziploc bags is I'm gonna get them to hand check them at the security so they don't go through the x-ray machine. They're quite good at Auckland Airport, they will check them, but you have to put them in these Ziploc bags. They don't wanna have them in the plastic canisters that you normally get. You gotta put them in a Ziploc bag like this and they're gonna be much more happier to do it for you. So the black and white film I've got. Oh, what have I got in here? Right, I've got two rolls, two rolls, yeah, there you go, two rolls of JCH Street Pan. Absolutely love this film, really contrasty, really nice 400 speed film. I've got two rolls of the classic, which is Kodak Triax. And I also have two rolls of P3200, which is a 3200 speed film. Now this is for later in the day or even photography, if I want to go out and shoot. So that's the black and white bag. And in the color bag I have Two films I've never shot for in here. So I've got a couple of rolls of Portra, because I can't get Portra 160 at the moment, so I've got Portra 400. I'm gonna shoot these rolls at 200. Two rolls of Cine Steel 800T. Really nice film to use, especially with the lights in Taiwan and in Hong Kong as well. The neon signs in Hong Kong, this is gonna be a really nice film to use. I have two rolls of this new Cine Steel 400D, which is daylight balance film. I've never used this before, so I'm hoping to get a chance to use this and I'm gonna be quite interested to see what it looks like. And then I have one roll of Kodak Gold 200. I do have some more here somewhere, but I can't seem to find it. I've never shot Kodak Gold before. So I might shoot this film as well while I'm out there. So that's the color film I'm taking with me. I don't think I'm gonna need any more than that because I'm basically not gonna be shooting that much out there. This is my carry-on bag. This will have most of my stuff in it. I have a backpack as well, which carries my video gear because I do have a couple of videos to shoot out there. That's why I'm in Taiwan. I'm in Hong Kong to meet family and to meet up with a really good friend. Uh, there's my MP. And there is my M11P. I absolutely love this camera. And this lens has been a little bit interesting to get used to, but now I'm kind of getting used to it. I do really like this lens. It's a really nice lens and the image quality out of this lens is really good. You can check out the first impressions video which will be the video before this one. Um, and there will be a follow-up video when I get back from Taiwan because I will do a full review on this lens because I'll be using it more while I'm in Taiwan. So that goes in this bag. So there you go. You see it in there? It's not a problem. And then obviously I've got my notepad. I'll put it all back in there. You've got the wrist strap goes in here. Like I said, check out these cases because they are really handy. Really good quality. They don't take up much room. I have about four or five of these actually. I have all different items in them for different jobs or traveling to different places and what I'm going to carry and then there's my short headphones and it all fits in there really well so I won't be carrying all of this when I'm walking around I'll definitely have the MP on me the M11P should be on me most of the time but then I will have the Q3 with me as well so I may have that in there really nice bag 
Really well made, really happy with it. But like I said, you can only buy this from Red Dot Cameras in the UK. They do ship worldwide, but you do need to ask when you go through the payment process for them to send you a quote to send this to your country. I think this cost me about 35 New Zealand dollars, something like that, 30 or 35 New Zealand dollars to ship it from the UK to me. But there were two bags in that order because I did buy another bag, which I will talk about later on. It was there and it was a special edition and I was like, Okay, I buy myself a late birthday present. I like building the bags because they last a long time. They come with a five year warranty as well. And they are incredibly nice bags. And this is a bit different to every other building them out there. So that's it for this quick what's in my bag video. Sorry if I rambled on and if I missed stuff. I'm in a rush, I'm still packing gear, but I thought I'd show you guys what's in my bag for this trip. If any of you are in Taiwan or Hong Kong, please send me a message. I may still be in that country when you see this video and we can catch up for a coffee and a chat. I said I'm in Taiwan for five days, I think, and I'm in Hong Kong for four days. So definitely send me a message if you wanna catch up and have a coffee. And if you've got any suggestions about the bag and anything different I can do to keep my gear in there, please let me know down in the comment section. So that's it for this quick bag video, I hope. As always, thank you so much for watching.